Hello everyone, welcome back to this, which looks like the very first episode, uh, the very first level, if I'm not mistaken. It does. So I think uh, what's happened, fairly obviously, uh, the first episode, the first episode, look, let's start this again. Hello everyone, welcome back to Doom. Uh, this level looks like the first level of this episode, which is clearly intentional. Interesting. Because... When I was doing the first level of this episode, I thought, I remember this level, isn't there more to it? There is. You can see it already over there somewhere on the map. Ooh, careful. Um, this whole thing opens up at some point, I seem to remember, and gives you a lot more room to play. If you look over here, there's definitely something here. So that will open up at some point. Maybe this button does it? So that button closes the door, that button opens it. Fair enough, fair enough. So yeah, this whole bit of it is basically identical. I assume. This is like those Isaac levels where, uh, rooms where you just end up no freaking idea what the hell to do. Take some damage, move on. It helps if you have a black heart, but we don't in this game. We open this up. Also fairly much the same. It's much easier when you've got actual guns to help you out. Didn't necessarily mean to press 5 there, but I guess it worked out. So we know that there's going to be a demon in here. Oh yeah, an array of them in fact. Put all your shotgun shells into it and you should be fine. I feel like three shots has meant that the last shot was ever so slightly overkill. Maybe it's just you can get lucky with two. Is there damage randomization in Doom? Is my question. Like, does each shot have a random amount of damage associated with it? Or... Yeah, that didn't do much damage. So you really need to make sure that everything's spread out when you use the BFG. The, uh... Doom 3's BFG... Had lore associated with it. So I'm pretty sure that's now a teleporter. Nope. There's a fucking cat uh, monster demon thingy. Lots of rockets, bro. Any better than that. So our previous episode's boss is now a mid-game boss. I'm just going to stand here and shoot it with my vulnerability until it runs out. Uh, it was interesting, the previous one. I only found the BFC the first time I played Doom 3. And I remember all the lore about it, which is, I guess that was basically what I remember most about Doom 3, is how good, how, I say how good the lore was, but it was very, um, it was well presented. It, it was considered. Partial invisibility. Might as well, I was going to say might as well take that. Probably not. Uh, there's a much better opportunity to get all of our HP back. That was just terrible damage, don't talk to me about it. Uh, when we've actually taken so much HP that... So much damage that we need we need the soul sphere to recover it. Look, I have got partial invis invisibility and then discovered that I'm bad at the game. Uh, by which I mean, because the enemies now can't see me, I'm dodging into their shots rather than away from them. Just punch these bastards now. We do have a chainsaw now, by the way. It didn't hurt. Of course it didn't hurt. We just got the thing that stops it from hurting. Cool, cool, cool. So all of this has opened up now. This is basically what we expected. Oh yeah. <laughs> she just said that. And then immediately forgot. Cool. Cool. Bring it on. Culture Violence. That's the name of the game. It's actually Doom. Okay. Ooh, well done you. Yeah, all of this opens up, I remember. This is what I was thinking the first level was. I remember finding it. So we'll take invulnerability. These are in see-through, but we can see them now because all of the <laughs> effects have layered on top of one another to actually make it easier to see these sons of a bitches than we originally did. Might spend the time to go all the way back and find the uh, 
soul sphere after all of this because I am taking some damage. Obviously, I'm invincible. So right now, I'm not worried about that. And we have previously mentioned that making Cacodemons perpetually flinch is a great way of killing them. Saves a lot of ammo in that section, but I'm going to stop doing that now. Yeah, I don't really want to continue there. And this now should be open. It is. That's a very interesting thing that they've done. So you can see that the original thing that closed this door is uh, still there. But if you walk up to this, you need a red key to press it. So you can still... The fact you can still activate that kind of makes it... It's like a immersion breaker sort of thing. Oh my god. Help. Sorry, what? <laughs> Bastards. Uh... I guess I'll put a cut in here, and I'll see you on the other side of all this complete nonsense. Uh, yeah. Help. <laughs> Mum. Partial invisibility. Thank <laughs> you. 
<clears throat> Alright, so what I've done is I've ignored this invincibility here until we are just about to get to the point where those SOBs show up. You know what? Heck you. Uh, so that we can use the invincibility to hopefully get all the way into this extra place, not waffle on about how that breaks immersion and shit. Just beat the crap out of these whilst under the influence of not being able to die. In fact, you know what? I also intentionally did not use my BFG or my plasma cannon because I wanted to be able to um, be able to the shit out of all them uh, at this point. So... We're all right here. Yeah, that seemed like a fairly obvious trap, but at least we got some plasma out of it. Pays for our BFC use. More? More. <laughs> Again, it's not really worth uh, using the BFC just because we got the uh, plasma for it. We should save that for lots of small enemies. The BFC is basically our black heart. You know, it doesn't actually cost us any HP, but uh, using it just does a lot of damage to the whole area rather than... So now I've got the red key, which means you can push out a button. Which probably shouldn't be running around with the rocket launcher, because at close range anything could happen. Right, on this particular one, you might think, mm, uh, we might as well take the soul sphere now. That only works once. Interesting. I didn't know you could have a one-time teleporter. Soul more? Sphere. No more. Okay, cool. Uh... Yeah, the, the fact that you can walk up to this and not quite press it, it slightly breaks... I'm, I'm trying not to say breaks immersion, but that's what it does, if you see what I mean. Um, I think any secrets, perhaps there weren't any. I, I assume that was a secret level, because it was, you know, non-trivially similar to the uh, first level, and therefore seemed a bit April Foolsy. I'm glad I picked up the Soul Sphere just before the end of the last level. What we here in Limbo, did it say? Limbo, yeah. So Limbo is a place in... Uh, it, it's it's the pre-hell afterlife place. It's where you go if... It's like purgatory, basically. But it means you're in neither one place nor the other, hence the phrase in Limbo. And I'm not quite sure whether that's related to Limbo dancing, but I guess you can dance the Limbo Tango if you really want to. I mean, rockets are kind of valuable. We've only got seven left, so maybe I shouldn't be doing that right now. Do do do. Especially given the proliferation of these um, shotgun shells, we're finding them everywhere. Plus, there's a lot of shotgun troopers, which I believe is their name, even though it sounds like I made it up. Now, I'm not going to go in there yet. I know there's a door in there, but I don't think I can open it. And I want to sort of clear out the place. I know that there's going to be... This opens up at some point. But I want to make sure that we've uh, dealt with the majority. Oh, that'll be how you do it. There we go. Oh, that was actually this opening up, which is interesting. Didn't actually expect that. Kind of expecting to be uh, ganged up on from behind. Flanked, as it were. But I want to save ammo as much as possible, because you never know what's going to come up in the future. I really like the Doom 3 rendition of those Screaming Skulls as well. And they have those horrible fly babies which are new to Doom 3. And they were really, really creepy. And obviously Doom is meant to be a really, really creepy game. I mean, you literally get stuck in hell. Right? It's supposed to be gross. I think we can take this. I mean, it's a secret, but all the enemies came out of it. So I'm feeling like, again, it's not that secret. You know? Try harder. Plenty of shotgun ammo, which is why I'm sticking with it for now. There's lots of places I'm also very reluctant to actually go into. Uh, because the floor looks ouchy. Ouchy floors again. We've talked about this. Very concept. Like All this blood floor, I'm assuming, is ouchy floors. So, I think what we want to do is activate this area here. We'll do this first. Yeah, it did hurt. That opened up something over here. Yeah, that's opened up this, which is a place I was expecting to open up. Noises. Yeah. 
was talking to a chap today hired by work to, you know, be, <laughs> uh, to talk about things that you, wet things basically, woolly things, uh, and he said that another word for family is tribe. And he's right, because you have a lot more people in your tribe than you do in your family, and humans are a very tribal species. So we want to go over there, but I suspect that those things will go down as a result. Yeah, both of them, in fact. Um, there's a lot of introverted people in my tribe. So, uh, there's a certain thing about... Intro not all introverted people, I'm sure, suffer from this, but especially in uh, the people that I know, they do. Which is where you're just trying to keep yourself to yourself and someone turns the hoover on or drops something or something and if basically it's considered the height of bad manners if you know that you're going to make a noise and don't shout noises beforehand obviously shouting is a noise but <coughs> kind of expecting yeah red key there i'm okay with doing this because we've got a soul sphere available so if we're taking more damage than is required we can somewhat recover it uh, but yeah, you shout noises when you're about to make a loud noise and you know it. Everything's a red door. So maybe we should not have taken that yet because we probably could have guessed. Red doors everywhere. So, launching plasma rifle balls is a, a noises worthy offence. And worthy tied you if you don't shout up front. Where is my blue door, please? And what did that do? Ah, we haven't been this way yet, and I'm glad that we've got this thing active. No, that's red door too. So we've got lots and lots of red doors. No obvious blue doors. There's a couple over there. Oh, that's back in the entrance chamber. So we'll go... Nope, this way. Nope, this way. Yep. Which is over here. And over here. And then across the way, before our thing runs out, we've got two blue doors. Fine. I understand the layout now. Remember this. Something causes a wall to go up. Hello. Ten rockets. Not necessarily the ideal weapon for something that continues to move. I mean, traditional FPS rocket strat is to shoot the ground and use splash damage, but in Doom you don't really have the option of shooting the ground, you can only shoot where your weapon is pointing. Even in this GL version of Doom, in which you can look up and down, you do not have the option of actually shooting the ground near them because it will aim upwards for you. I'm not sure if that's... Let's have a look. Let's do this together. Uh, auto aim, auto aim. I don't see an on or off. Oh, there's loads. <laughs> Apologies for the pesky noise. Activate item. We don't have items. Might be in the uh, gameplay menu. Oh my goodness! Weapon stay. Spawn father. Same. These are um, smart auto aim. Sure. We'll turn it on since it was off. These are all um, multiplayer settings. Lose frag if fragged. Player setup. Name. Come on. Ultras, there we go. There's only one skin. Nothing is changing. Very well. At least it might tell us who died in future. That was worth a little look, do you think? A brief sojourn into the uh, options menu of a GL version of Doom. This is the sort of thing that happens when you let people have the source code. That's why I'm a big advocate of open source software. There's um, there's this idea that open source software suffers from a lack of a, a, a productive, not a productive, but a profitable business model. I want a grenade now, if you don't mind. <laughs> uh, I guess we get this out. The reason I got this out is that it can cause flinching, so anything that we find down there is less likely to be able to charge us. Because we'll be causing it to flinch very regularly. Ow. 
provided we hit it, of course. So this is a disconnected maze. So in mazes, the trick is to follow the either left or right edge, basically. Which works, and you will get to every single part of the maze, unless the maze is disconnected. And disconnected maze basically means that there's a sex... It's like um, two concentric circles. You can follow the outside edge of the outside circle, but there's nothing that connects the outside circle to the inside circle. And topologically, a disconnected maze and two concentric circles are exactly the same thing. Although this does not appear to be a disconnected maze as I expected. If I was wrong about that, my apologies. Where do you think this takes us? Ah, that's the destination for that. Uh, we could do some HP, actually. So let's top up our HP properly. And then we can pick up the Soul Sphere and... Um, double it, basically. What was I talking about? Oh, who fucking knows. You talk shit all the time. Apparently, that floor is hard enough. Hurts enough that he is shocked by how much it hurts. Oh. Interesting. We have found a place. It's, uh... It takes us basically to the exit, I assume. There's a way out, and we can go back here. Which, of course, puts us back here, so we have to run across there again. And it's... Game. It only hurt five. What's the matter with you? Don't really need to do that. I think I guess we could go back over here because there was a red door here. It's a secret, apparently. There is a way back, but I'm probably going to go over there. No, it may be a bad idea. It hurt a little bit, but not much. Hi. Okay, that's kind of not what I expected to happen. Being honest, I genuinely expected that I would not be able to reach that. So I'm just going to take the damage. We have a lot of HP. HP, because we're in a world where H starts with an H. Um, okay, thanks. And we'll go and pick up, well, first of all, this HP. I think it's possibly a certain amount of damage in a certain space of time that causes him to pull that hideous face that I'd rather never see again. Um, topologically, man, topology is an interesting facet of mathematics. If you don't know about it, you should go and check it out. There's a bunch of number file videos which I thoroughly recommend if you're vaguely interested in anything that is remotely smart. <laughs> if you have a brain between your ears, which I know many people don't, uh, check out some of the number file videos. With There's this guy. Oh, what a chap. He is so excited about absolutely everything. And he looks... He's a little bit like... um. Uh, Professor, Doctor, Do Do Brown, Doctor Brown, Doctor Emmett Brown, from the uh, famous Back to the Future series. He's he's very great, Scotty. You know, uh, a very entertaining entertainer. I don't even know if he is an entertainer, but he seems like the sort of person who should be. He's very, Christ what was it? Christopher? Someone's going to have to help me out here because I can't remember names. Apparently, the guy who plays Doc Brown. The guy who plays Doc Brown is the same guy who plays Uncle Fester and the judge in Roger Rabbit. So, if you didn't know that, you're welcome. Because I was amazed when I discovered that. I thought this is the best information in the world. Right, that takes us back there as well. So, have we not visited one of these yet? We visited that one. We visited those two. Those were pain in the ass. We visited that one. It must be just this one. We pressed that button and I don't even know what it did. It's possible that one of the places we went to, which said a secret is revealed, was not available until we opened that. So we pressed that button, so it could be something that um sort of very very disparate two part secret discovery. We might as well uh, I think I'm just gonna finish this level. Which involves going into here. Does not. You're wrong. This one? No. Genuinely did not think it was the middle one. It is. Not. What does this do? Oh. So I accidentally did it right. That's interesting. I have very low armor, but I don't think there's another... Oh, uh, this is completely the wrong way. 
I don't think there's another armor suit available on this level, and we're very fast approaching 100% uh, health, which is usually fine, except we're doing it from the wrong direction. Okay, so... <laughs> Must be this one, then. I guess it's intentional that you forget which one's which. Very much expecting some uh, baddie influence there. Well, that was a good episode. We got 100% of everything. Perfect. I'm uh, quite happy to see that. I didn't expect it at all. But uh, yeah, Gate to Limbo is finished. They said it was Limbo, but it's actually the Gate to Limbo. Uh, thank you for watching this episode. I'm going to leave it there. Remember, leave a like, which helps us. Leave a subscribe, which helps you. And go check out the other Contributors series because, you know, the more reach, the better. And if you fancy sharing it to your friends, if you like this episode or any of the other episodes of the other series, please feel absolutely free to share as much as you want. But if you are just watching this series, then I hope to see you in the next episode.